Hallelujah. Well, Father, you be exalted, Lord, which you are exalted. For the Father has highly exalted you above all other names. That at the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, that every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that you are Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Well, good evening, those who are joining in at our 7 o'clock time, our refresher time. And uh, I'm sure on behalf of Bishop Raphael Green, praise the Lord, you had the opportunity to join with us during this time of refreshment. So a lot of things we're going to share tonight is something that the household of faith particularly are familiar with, but it's a refreshing for us. We pray God would uh, bless the reading of his word and that we'll be edified by the word that he's going to share with us, and that our hearts will be open, receptive to the word of the Lord, even on this evening. Thank you for pressing through the rain and uh, the cold weather and everything else to hear the word of the Lord. Don't you know that Jeanette and I we was talking about that a couple days ago, that there we're so blessed in this nation, tremendously blessed in this nation, that uh, we have comfortable seats and large spaces and musicians and music and, you know, you can just go around the block and see another church. Or in some, some areas they travel for miles just to see a doctor, days just to see a doctor miles to get to uh, a church and stand three hours just to hear the preaching of the word we have so many bibles in our homes <laughs> whereas in some countries we're tremendously blessed i mean we're tremendously blessed where some countries i was watching a video where merlin hickey was uh undercover in a cave ministering to people in china with just few pages of scripture and um, we're blessed we got so many versions we don't even have that physical bible we can just turn on our computer i mean you can look up hebrew greek commentary you can get so many translations at our fingertips and yet we have such leanness of soul we can't believe god we can't believe god and you know, I don't know what generation it will impact. The many nations that were like that before us. You digging up the sand, finding artifacts about who those nations are. And I believe that uh, America's on that course too, unless God change, change. And there's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of God, kingdom of the devil. And that's where we are at war. Ain't no middle ground. You were born in the war. <laughs> you were a war baby. <laughs> Everybody was born in the war. And so you have a choice to fight or surrender. Surrender to God and be victorious. Or surrender to the devil and lose. I mean, the choice is you, up to you. So let's go and share a few things from the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for this time that we have together. And we pray, O oh God, that you would open our hearts to be receptive to what you desire to share. In the name of the Lord, may it be to your glory. And we pray, O oh God, that fruit would remain after being in your presence. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kit and Candace. I gave this to them at the very last moment. They've been diligently working that, you know, working that, you know, working in this in this ministry is that way, you know. Next thing you know, boom, there you go. <laughs> you call, you call, ready to do something, and uh, thank you for being so faithful and uh, and ready to help. You know, the word that the Lord's been sharing with Bishop. The last thing that I wrote down in regards to the the ministry of the word. He mentioned, how do I abound in the experiential knowledge and discernment needed to love excellently? And he, and he quoted Galatians 4.19. And he's, one of the things he mentioned was, it's through leaders' intercession unto Christ is fully developed in our lives 
is how we will abound in the experiential knowledge and discernment needed to love excellently. And so I began to explore that several days ago, and the Lord placed this on my heart. You know, Luke 13, 6 through 9. It says, he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look for three years. Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. So he says, cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. Can I have my phone? Yes, please. And then in Matthew 21, 19, you can just play it from my phone. Um, she can just play it from my phone. Sorry for the interruption. I have to have, you know, my atmosphere filled with worship. You all know me by now, right? Matthew 21, 19, it says, and when he saw a fig tree, this is Jesus by the wayside, he came to it and he found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And he said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. And immediately the fig tree withered away. Remember, we keeping in mind through leaders intercession until Christ is fully de developed in your and my lives. It's going to take leaders praying, leaders in your home leaders in the church, leaders in the community, leaders praying for leaders and leaders participating in prayer. Note several dilemmas in regards to what we were just talking about in those particular scriptures. There was no fruit on the tree. The other dilemma was he only saw leaves when there's supposed to be fruit on the tree. They were barren. And so his expectation was denied. He was hungry. He went to get a fig from a fig tree and he only saw leaves. Yeah, so his expectation was denied. And he was waiting. He's been waiting for several seasons. Several seasons. Genesis 1 verses 11 through 13 it's, it reads as follows. Yeah. A little, little bit lower, a little bit lower for me. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass. The herb that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind. Whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Galatians 5 verses 22 through 26 just stay with me a minute it says this but the fruit of the spirit is love joy you can lower that just a little bit more love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such there is no law and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not become conceited provoking one another envying one another 
And then in Romans 6, he says, but now being made free from sin and having become servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. So note in the creation mandate, God said his word was and is the seed that brings forth the fruit to yield after its kind. His word is spirit and his word is life. So when you and I received Christ, when we were born again, it was his word, his seed that was deposited in you and me to give us life and life in maturity or maturely and life more abundantly to yield after its kind. And so the process of stages of his fruit is love, joy, peace, etc. We just read that long suffering. And the mature expression of his fruit, the fruit in rightness was seen in, in and through Christ. He is the mature fruit of God. So we know that in the beginning, through God's creation mandate, that he wanted fruit and he wanted that to be multiplied to increase and it came by him speaking his word and that's very key for you and I to understand because when leaders are interceding it's very key that you and I hear the word of God let's go on this is a simple illustration about a natural process of an apple tree, the creation of an apple tree. You have the seed and it's planted in the soil and it goes through various stages in its process. It begins to grow, develop, it gets blooms and then you have apples. The, the seed that was planted has multiplied based upon the fruit of that tree. Now you can take the seeds from that fruit and plant many apple trees. That's discipleship. I hope you are listening. After its kind, there should be multiplicity. And it's the seed of his word deposited in us. There should be a multiplicity. A maturity. This tree is in its mature state when it's bringing forth fruit. When it's bringing forth, I'm talking in two dimensions, the earthly and the spiritual. You all get it. It's bringing forth the mature expression of love, the mature expression of peace, the mature expression of faithfulness that was demonstrated in Christ. And when we receive Christ, that seed has been planted in us. And it's going through a process. Yeah. Next line. There's nothing wrong with the seed. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the seed at all. God said, herbs, trees bring forth multiplicity. Increase, multiply. And it said, that's good because he spoke it. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with the seed. In 2 Corinthians 9, 10, it says, Now may he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase in the fruits of your righteousness. We know righteousness is a person. Righteousness is also understanding what has been approved, examined by God. And we agree with what is approved and examined by God. That's very key for you and I. Isaiah 50, 55 verses 9 through 11 says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but waters the earth, it make it 
bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower that's very key and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes forth what out of my mouth it's going to be like rain that descends on the ground saturating the soil for the word of God to bring forth fruit in his season in multiplicity because I've spoken it to multiply and increase that's what his word is supposed to do it will not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please that's higher than your thoughts higher than your ways and it shall prosper into the thing that I send it to do so it's nothing wrong with the seed it's going to accomplish what it was sent forth to do that's very key for you and I to take place because in the process of maturing to that full tree that the abundance of fruit is there it's going to take rain his teaching and understanding of him to get to the maturity of that fruit that was demonstrated through Christ Jesus yeah when leaders intercede to will fully develop in mature in maturity in Christ next line Mark 14 verse 12 he says this but when he was alone those around him with the 12 asked him about the parable and he said to them this is of course the parable of the seed song bearing so forth to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God but to those who are outside all things come in parables so that seeing they may not that they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them this is a mystery of how words that you cannot see receive bring about a maturation a transformative a conformative work in your and my life it's the mystery of the kingdom of God hallelujah yeah how our lives are changed and there is this experiential knowledge that the things that I used to do I don't do no more hallelujah because the rain is coming the teaching of his word when it lands on the ground saturated it's going to bring forth maturity yeah mark 4 13 17 declares and he said to them do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all parables the sower sows the word and these are the ones by uh, the wayside remember he came by the wayside looking for fruit from a fig tree yeah but these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown when they hear immediately satan immediately comes so we know automatically there's a spiritual war that's going on when the word comes in our midst when we hear it he says immediately satan comes yeah and he does what he takes the word the seed that was sown where in the hearts that's the ground you and i sitting in, in in praise and worship and exhortation and the word comes immediately the enemy is moving in distraction and all of a sudden you paid attention for a minute you gotta start getting sleepy he uses everything he used the lighting to put you to sleep woo you to sleep he used your appetite your stomach start growling what am i going to eat today you just missed a frame of word <laughs> yeah now you can stay up two and three hours watching a movie but time them read scripture start <laughs> immediately he comes because he does not want that seed to get in good ground to bring forth a mature fruit he doesn't that can be multiplied and increase so he comes immediately after the word he accuses brothers and sisters well if they were all that they would have came visit me <laughs> if that was a word of god i'm testing you know marshall if, 
see, let me see if this is really God. He'll come over here and speak to me. Well, God has already spoke to you. You don't need me to speak none to you. <laughs> he comes immediately accusing. So that you and I would not receive the word from God that does not return void. Yeah. He immediately comes. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. The condition of the earth itself. The condition of the heart. He said it's stony. When they hear the word, immediately... Receive it with gladness. Well, that was a good word. <laughs> Woo, that was a good word. Okay. You can't even get out the door <laughs> real quick. And the mother explicit it comes out. You know, whatever the case. You all know. Immediately they receive it with gladness. And they have what? No root in themselves. And so endure only for a time. Afterward. When tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they do what? They stumble. They stumble. He's given them an explanation of the, the parable. And so, the next line. So, what is a root of a tree called? It's called tap roots. Every tree starts with the tap root that provides stability and absorption. Over time, other roots outgrow the tap root. Most tap roots don't continue to grow ever more deeply because deep soil lacks the oxygen and nutrients that roots need to survive. You see that tree? Yeah. Tree roots serves many purposes. The tree roots, it anchors the tree in the soil, keeping it straight and stable. Yeah. And absorbs water from the soil. In the previous slide, they had no roots. Therefore, they were not able to get the nutrients that was necessary for them to get roots. Yeah. The tree roots also take nutrients and chemicals out of the soil and use them to do what? To produce what they need for the tree's growth, development, and repair. That's very key. Next slide. John 15, 4 declares this truth. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Jesus said this. Unless, unless it abide in the vine. No more can you unless you abide in me. It's impossible. We cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit without abiding in Christ. That is what he's seeking for. It cannot produce it of its own self. That which is God looking for to be dispensed, to be dispensed and multiplied. It cannot produce it of his own strength or his own ability unless it abide in me. The word abide here, it means to stay, to remain. It has seven references in relationship to, to abide. When, when it's referring to, to a place, it means to sojourn, to tarry. To tarry as a guest, to lodge, not to depart, not to leave, to continue to be present, to maintain unbroken fellowship with one, to persevere, to be held or kept continually. So he said, tarry as a guest with me. Continue to be with me. Maintain this un unbroken fellowship with me. Yeah. In relationship to time, it means to continue to be, to last, to endure, not to perish, to stand, to remain in him, to be still in his possession. Continue to be with me. To endure with me. To stand 
And as a state or a condition, it means to remain as one is, not to become another or a different, or to wait for, wait for me. All those are in reference to place, time, state, or a condition. The word abide. abide. So he said, abide in me. The expectation of my father is that when I come to a tree, I'm looking for the full manifestation of fruit to partake of. If there is no roots, and if the roots are not getting the nutrients that is needed, there will be no fruit. Not fruits. The fruit of the Spirit has all of those multidimensional characteristics in it. One fruit is love, patience, kindness, gentle. I've never seen a fruit like that. Yeah. So from him... <laughs> That seed is in you. What's in you? The fruit of love, peace, gentle. Yeah. All of that's there. And he wanted to come to full fruition. So that he could take fruit from that tree. Just like we saw an example. If you open up that apple, there are many seeds in there. And if you plant those seeds, you're going to get multiple trees. Hallelujah. So the word that's in us, and we are dispensing the aid of the Holy Spirit, there's going to be multiplication, increase. Hallelujah. Because his word goes forth into the ground of people's hearts. And the mystery of the kingdom is there's a transformative and a conformative thing that takes place in your soul, your psyche. You get delivered from teaching. You get deliverance from the presence of God. Hallelujah. You don't need nobody to spit on you. The word itself does itself. Hallelujah. It has the capacity to transform you and bring forth fruit. If you abide. You cannot do it of your own self. It, it cannot bear fruit of itself. Hallelujah. Isn't that good to know? So we all need help. Praise the Lord. We all need help. That's why he sent the helper. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me, continually abiding in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do no thing. Nothing. Yeah. Acts 14, 17, 17 says, Nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and with gladness. He said, I look for fruit. It's been three years I'm waiting on this tree to bear some fruit. You know, I've sent rain. Yeah, but there was no fruit. Yeah, leaders in a session is hold it one more year. I'll dig around it. <laughs> I'll fertilize it so there can be some fruit. That's leaders in a session. Yeah, until we fully developed in our lives. Can you say amen? So John 15, 16 says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you for this purpose, that you should go and bring forth fruit. Well, if you don't have any, you can't bring forth none, right? And that your fruit should what? Remain for this purpose. That whatsoever you shall ask. Uh-oh, now we get into a place of, of intercession and prayer and supplicating before the Lord, petitioning. You should ask of the Father in my name. He may give it to you. There's a maturity that takes place in the presence of God. Now when you're praying, because of that fruit is growing and mature, you just don't pray of your own self. Hallelujah. You're learning to pray with the one who is praying. Yeah. There's a maturity in your, your faith. And now you're not just asking for houses, lands, and clothes. Yeah. You all know it. 
You got so many suits in your closet and shoes in your closet, <laughs> and you only got two feet. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> and he said nothing about the purses. <laughs> Mark 4, 7 said, and some fell among thorns when he sowed the seed. And the thorns grew up and did what? It choked that seed. And it did not, what? Yield no fruit. One of the reasons that there is no fruit to its maturity, he tells us very clearly, it's being choked. And that which fell among thorns, he tells us, are they that when they have heard, they go forth and are choked, how? With the cares and riches and pleasure of this life. And what happens? And bring no fruit to what? Maturity, perfection, fully developed. He tells us what's happening. The cares of life, the riches of life, the pleasures of life. It impacts the word that they do not come to maturity in God. They don't come to maturity. There is, there is now no uh, manifestation of the ordained creation mandate to multiply and increase. Yeah, because God wants us to multiply, right? Yeah. Luke 6, 44 says, for every tree is known by its fruit. For from thorns, men do not gather figs. There are no fruit among thorns. Nor from bramble bushes gather their grapes. There are no grapes among bramble bushes. Because he tells us that thorns <laughs> grow to choke the word. Yeah. Out of us. That there will be no fruit, no yield fruit. Philippians 1.22 says, Now if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I choose, I know not. When I'm living in the flesh, I don't even know what to do or to choose. This is the labor that I possess when I'm living in my flesh. I have no divine direction. No dependency upon God. The world, you led by your gut. What feels good to you. Yeah. And not the word of the Lord. When there is no fruit. Yeah. Talking about leaders in a session, right? Luke 6, 43. For a good tree bringeth not forth, what? Corrupt fruit. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Now, no chastening for the present seems to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields, it continually yields, what? This peaceable fruit. Remember the fruit of the Spirit. It's a peaceable fruit of righteousness. Really discerning what is approved by God. And you're responding in peace concerning what God says. This is my will, and that's not my will. So if he withhold it, that's good for me. Yeah, you living in peace about what God has says this is approved and this is not approved. Yeah, and there's, there's joy in regarding that. And to those who are discerning, those who are exercising in fellowship with God, discerning his will. Luke 3, 9 says, and now also the axe is laid unto the roots of the tree. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, he said, is hewn down and cast in the, in the fire. I know the word of the Lord says when Jesus Christ came. Now we're getting ready to pray. When Jesus Christ came to that fig tree, he cursed it. He cursed it. And the next day they said, wow, look how quick that tree withered. Yeah. He said when he cursed it immediately, he went straight to the root. And the manifestation of their root came 24 hours later that the tree was withered. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things that need to be spoken to, to roots. Roots of issues. 
need to go right down to the root because the soil has been contaminated. You know, the soil must be tested. If there's chemical deposit in it, that's what trials and temptations, it really brings out what's going on in the heart. It really brings out the receptivity of the word when you test the soil to see if there's toxins and chemicals in that soil. And so tests and trials brings out what has been deposited in that soil. So in our time of prayer, we don't lie against the Holy Spirit when he says, you mean. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, you don't have faith. Or you need to come to me more. Whatever he speaks to you, he's revealing what's in the, t in the soil. So that when the seed gets there, it's going to bring forth fruit that will remain. Yeah. And it won't be choked by the cares of the life cares of life and pleasures and riches yeah because God's expectation is I want a fruitful people yeah it brings him glory when fruit remains yeah this is our prayer when leaders intercession is given we have to look at the greatest leader of all Jesus the Christ how he prays in John 17, he says this. He says, I have manifested your name to the men whom you've given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. Hallelujah. This is for every head of household, for those you are discipling, for your family. Lord, I share with you, I share with my family who they are, who you are. You know, same thing, a leader praying, interceding. I manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have what kept your word. Now they have known that all things which I've given that which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you've given to me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. Father, the seed that you gave me, I gave to them. And you want that seed to replicate as its kind. Hallelujah. The kind of seed if you took an orange seed, you don't expect an apple tree to grow. Yeah. Jesus said, the words you gave me, I gave it to them. So the expectation is the fruit of that spirit in his maturity, when it's received, it's going to bring forth your love, your kindness, your patience. And he's praying as a leader. He's interceding for his apostles. The prayer is Lord. Manifest. That's what the word manifest. It means reveal yourself to us. Your church. Your sons. Your daughters. Lord re manifest yourself. Reveal yourself to my children. Reveal yourself to my daughter. My wife. My son. My nieces. My nephews. The words that I've shared with them. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, I pray. Guard. Watch over. Observe. Keep the word. That we have received from you. Lord, may they keep that word. It's full of your fruit. Guard it in them. Yeah. Preserve it in them. Keep it in them. Watch over to perform it, God. The word that you gave to me to give to them. Because the expectation is that fruit remain. Yeah. Lord, help us to come. To know. To recognize. To perceive. To discern that the words that are sown are from you. Those little 
sentences or phrases is in relationship to the definition of the words that's in parentheses. Lord, help us to come. Help us to know that the words that are, that are sown are from you. Help us to recognize it. That when the word come forth, they're just not <laughs> words from a man. Help me to discern you're speaking to me. Because that word, when it lands on good ground, it's going to go through the process and bring forth mature fruit that will remain and bring you glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lord, help us to help us to lay hold, to get, to take the words that have been given and made known to us. Because he said, Father, they have received them. Help them to lay hold to it, God. To take it. Help this congregation to lay hold to your word to guard it, to keep it. Help them to know that the words came from you. Yeah. Lord, help us to have faith in, to trust in, to believe in you and your words. He says, they have believed. So our prayer is in regards to what he prayed for his apostles. Yeah. Reveal yourself. Guard that word that you that you gave to me to give to them. Help them to know and to recognize and discern that these are the words that come from you. Help them to lay hold to that word, to take it, to keep it. Help them, oh God, to believe and trust in that word that you've given because it does not return void. That's a leader's intercession. Yeah. Next slide. Can we agree with that this morning, this evening? Father, in Jesus' name, we pray this for this people, for this congregation, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord, for Metro Christian Worship Center, every family member, that you'll manifest yourself, make yourself known, that you will guard and watch over that word that's been planted, God, that you'll keep them through your word. Help them to know and to recognize and even discern that the words that were sown were from you. Help them to lay hold to that word, to grab that word, God, that's been given to them. Help them to have faith in what you have said and who you are. It's impossible for you to lie. Hallelujah. Become the full development in you couple more slides and then he prays this second part he says I do not pray for the world but for those whom you've given me because they are yours and all mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them now I am no longer in the world but these are in the world and I come to you holy father keep through your name those whom you've given me that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So Lord, may our lives esteem you, honor you, celebrate you, make you renowned, and may fruit remain because he says, I am glorified in them. How is the Father glorified? When there is increase of fruit and that fruit remain. And he says, I'm glorified in them. That means they are possessing fruit and it's remaining. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are esteeming me they are honoring me they are celebrating me they are making me renown hallelujah the apostle says don't look on us like we're some great people hallelujah it's jesus the christ hallelujah they make known who i am. they renown me they are always pointing to me they are glorifying they are demonstrating in full maturity the fruit 
of your divine nature. Yeah. Lord, may the world know that you exist, that you are alive, that you are active in and through your church. He said, may they be one as we are one. May the world know that the church is alive. Because when the world know that the church is alive, they know that you are alive. That you exist. Hallelujah. That you are active and working through your church. God. Hallelujah. Lord, may we possess our full inheritance in and through you. Yeah, because he says, keep them from the evil one. Hallelujah. All that you planned, all that you purposed and began to work in us complete and finished through your glorious wisdom hallelujah thank you lord we're going to pray this for metro and our families amen father we thank you that may our lives esteem you bring you glory and honor may our lives glorify you may our lives celebrate you make you renowned god and may fruit remain that will bring you glory lord jesus Hallelujah. And may the world know that you exist through your church. May the world know that you are alive. May the world know that you are active and that you're still working through your church and in your church, Lord. And may we possess the full inheritance that you have for us, Lord. That you keep us from the enemy. Keep us from the one who comes to steal your word, God. That all that you planned in our lives, in our family lives, in our individual lives, in our corporate lives, oh God, will be fulfilled, that it will be finished, that it will come to full fruition and maturity through you, and that you will be glorified. Hallelujah. We believe you do this. Amen. And then the last prayer for us, individually, corporately, for our family. He, he prayed this. It's through leaders in a session that Christ is fully developed in our lives. And Jesus Christ modeled it for his apostles. Hallelujah. Yeah. And even if we elevated that, he prayed for his children. God prayed for his apostle who was his children. Same thing. Amen. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I've given them your word. And the world has hated them. Why? Because they're not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them. What? From the evil one. Yeah. They are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them. By your truth. Your word is truth. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of our weapon truth as you sent me into the world I also have sent them into the world and for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth and so Lord because of your dispensation of grace poured out may our source of joy and gladness be to the full within us by knowing your name and knowing you. He says, I want your joy to be full because you know who I am. Hallelujah. And then he says, Lord, where our spirits are willing and our flesh is weak, keep us from falling into temptation. He prayed this for his children too, didn't he? For his apostles. Keep us from the evil one, from every strategic dimension of warfare that could cause us to stumble. To fall, even lose heart. Because he said, those by the wayside, they stumbled. Yeah. And then, Lord, may your truth purify, set us apart as holy, meaning sanctify, that we receive and mature us in believing. And may the seed given be seed for us to sow into other lives. And that they would learn of you to glorify our Father. Because he tells us, go to make into all the nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Baptizing them in the name of the Son. 
baptizing them in the name of the Holy Spirit and teaching them what I've commanded you. This is not just literally baptizing in water, but I want you to immerse them in who I am. Immerse them in who the Son is. Immerse them in who the Holy Spirit is. And then teach them what I've commanded you. Yeah. And so we have that commission to do that. And then because he said it in this prayer. Father, they're kept by your name. That's how we're kept. Mentally, emotionally, in every aspect of our lives. Being totally immersed in who he is. Who is your father? Who is the son? Who is the Holy Spirit? Yeah. That's going to bring about the maturation of the fruit. When you know that you know that you know who your daddy is. Amen. To we fully are mature and develop in Christ. Yeah. That's a leader's intercession. And then he goes on and he said, I not only pray for them. Yeah. yeah. He praying for us. Amen. Amen. So I want to pray that as well in the name of the Lord. Father, I pray for this household because you have poured out upon us your grace that we should celebrate with joy and gladness who you are because we know you. And we're kept by your name. Lord, I pray that our spirits would yield to the work of the spirit. We know that our flesh is weak and bring us leanness of soul. So Lord, keep us from falling into temptation. To communing with you. Keep us from the evil one. Keep us from every strategic and diabolical plan from hell. Every snare, every trap. Every deceptive nature and seducing, seducing spirit. In the name of the Lord that will cause us to stumble in our faith and our confidence in you. Father, I pray that you purify us through your truth. Mature us, God, through your word. For your word is spirit and is life. We pray this for this house and for this people and for our families. In the name of Jesus, you showed us how. A leader intercedes. And may we respond. In like kind. That there may be multiplicity. Of fruit. And multiplicity. Of your kingdom. That which you originally. Purposed and planned. For it to be. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Son of the living God. Can you say amen. 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 Well, we're going to take communion and then we're going to just let you go. We're going to pray in regards to that. There's just a few of us, so we just need one line tonight. Thank you, Lord, as we take communion together. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you. He's Pastor Chris is going to help me out. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. The word of the Lord declares us on that night when Jesus was about to be betrayed. It's so explicit that uh, Judas, he was only interested in the money. And he called him teacher. He didn't call him Lord like the other disciples. But Jesus said something profound that night. He said, as often as you do this, he was saying, you know, do it in remembrance of me because it was his body that will be broken and his blood that will be shed. So he said, remember my body, my life that will be given for you. Remember my blood that will establish an everlasting covenant with you. Don't you know Every debt has been paid for and sealed by the blood of Jesus. That you owe the devil nothing. So when he tries to come and get something from you, it has already, you are liberated. You owe him nothing. So no generational iniquity. 
No generations can pass on. It's been sealed, rad eradicated by the blood of the covenant. Hallelujah. So when he's trying to influence your seed or your seed seed. No, the covenant has already been sealed by the blood of Jesus. I owe you nothing. And he says, when you do this, remember that. Hallelujah. And remember that I, my body was broken for, take this body, it's bread. It's life to you. Hallelujah. Remember that I'm giving you life, sustenance that will sustain you. We just talked about it. We don't live by bread alone. We live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. How are you going to get that word? He just told us. It comes out of my mouth. So you got to spend time with him to hear what he's saying. Fellowship with him. So when we're partaking of communion, we are remembering his body. The divine exchange that took place on Calvary. Hallelujah. Everything that he went through, he said, I'm, in the, I'm exchanging it for, for you to have and participate of my glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. He felt your sorrow. Yeah, he did. He said, I know what you feel like when you're sorrowful. Yeah. He bore our pain. I know what you feel like when you're in pain. Hallelujah. Yeah. I took it for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we remember. Hallelujah. Joyously, not in sad countenance, the divinest change that took place at Calvary. Praise the Lord. And we give you praise. We give you. We remember you. Hallelujah. Every time we partake of your body and your blood. We remember your life. And we remember this everlasting covenant that you made. That cannot be broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. I want to leave you with this, this thought. Really this truth. When the Lord says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know what he said? He said, health will never leave you nor forsake you. Because he is healing. He is deliverance. He is redemption. He said, redemption would never leave you. Healing would never leave you. Yeah. Salvation would never leave you. Life would never leave you. We don't die. We sleep. When he said, I will never. He is all those things. I'll never leave you. He is all of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Won't you stand? Won't you come? And let's partake of his, his body and his blood. My God, we have access to life itself. Access to him. Amen. Come on around. Come on around. If you're at home, won't you grab something? Piece of bread. Light bread. Tear it off. You don't have any juice. Get some water. God turned water to, oh, water to wine. <laughs> yeah, he did. Won't you partake with us? In the name of the Lord. And sis, you can play anything you, you like. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We bless your people as they come. We thank you that's healing in you. In the name of Jesus. You're present. Hallelujah. You make us completely whole. In the name of the Lord. You abide with us forever. We always have support. Hallelujah. Because you're always present. We have an everlasting contract with you. A covenant with you. That cannot be broken. You are a faithful Lord. So we remember that covenant. That was sealed by your blood. We bless those who have chimed in. To listen to your word. That you desire fruit to remain. And that your word. May it come to full maturity. That it may be given. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For your word is forever settled in heaven. Heaven and earth will pass away before your word will. We're held together by the word of your power. In the name of Jesus, you're faithful to your word. Help us to believe it. Help us to trust what you said. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you for chiming in. God bless you. I'm letting you go a little early <laughs> this evening. Go in the strength of the Lord and expect God to do great things in your life. Have a wonderful rest of the evening.